Up to now, we've been dealing with real numbers. The reason being is when you're dealing with DC circuits, you only need a single number to represent the voltages and currents. If the input is a constant, everything else is a constant, and a real number does just a perfectly fine job representing constants. With sine waves, however, I have both the sine and cosine part. I need a way to represent two parameters with a single number. Complex numbers let you do that. Likewise, electrical engineers live and breathe complex numbers because that's how we analyze our circuits with AC inputs. Now the objective here is to become familiar with the use of complex numbers for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You should be able to breeze through complex numbers with your calculator. At the end we'll talk about HP calculators. They're very good at doing complex numbers. You're going to need a calculator that can do complex numbers. With a complex number there's two parts. There's the real part and the complex part. I can also represent it as an amplitude and an angle. Those are two different forms of the complex number. Essentially I represent two parameters, the real part and complex part with the amplitude and angle with a single number that's complex. Now complex numbers aren't necessarily but they do make life a whole lot easier. To illustrate how math, uh, different types of numbers, can make certain operations much, much easier, uh, consider the number zero. Zero is a very strange concept. It's a number that represents nothing. It really isn't needed. The Romans, for example, didn't have the number zero, but they still had a very strong economy uh, and were clearly able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide without the number zero. But it's not easy. For example, suppose you want to add the two numbers together. Uh, MXXIII plus CVI, which in Arabic numerals is 1023 plus 106. In Roman numerals, it's not that easy. Multiplication is even harder. The Romans could do it. They had a very elaborate commerce system. You can multiply and divide and subtract without uh, the number zero. With the number zero, it makes life much, much easier. A second strange idea is the negative number. Negative numbers were invented in Holland, which helped it become a world power. Uh, negative numbers don't really make a whole lot of sense, like how do you represent minus one apple? However, if you do have a negative number, what Holland was able to do is keep track of the profits from their ventures by keeping track of credits and debits. Basically, Holland invented the double entry bookkeeping system. That allowed Dutch merchants to focus on ventures which were profitable rather than ventures which simply brought in a lot of money at the end, ignoring how much cost was put into the venture. Complex numbers are what electrical engineers use. They allow you to solve circuits with sinus little inputs just by using a single number to represent the sine and the cosine. If you didn't use complex numbers, you'd wind up with twice as many equations. So likewise, using complex numbers does make life a lot easier. Now the definition of a complex number, the two basic definitions, j squared is minus one. In electrical engineering, we use j. In math, we use i. We use j because for us, i means current. So essentially, j is the square root of minus one. What that is, it's kind of a placeholder. I've got the real axis for real numbers and the complex axis for complex numbers. Another definition is e to the j theta is cosine theta plus j, j sine theta. e to the j theta is a unit uh, circle that spins around. Take the real part, it goes from plus one to minus one, that maps out cosine. Take the complex part, that maps out sine. So likewise, e to the j theta has both the real part and complex part, that's cosine and sine. This is the part that's really useful. I could represent cosines and sines and keep track of them. The real part will be cosine. Turns out here minus j will be sine. With a single number, I can represent both the cosine term and the sine term. To express a complex number, there's two forms. There's rectangular and polar. In rectangular coordinates, I represent the real part and the complex part explicitly, like x plus jy. I can also represent it in polar form. That's the amplitude and angle. From trigonometry, there is a relationship. The amplitude is the square root of x squared plus y squared. The angle is arctangent y over x. And likewise, I can go also go from polar to rectangular. x is our cosine theta, y is our sine theta. With complex numbers, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. 
Addition is fairly straightforward. In rectangular coordinates, if I have a complex number, 4 plus j2, and I add to it 1 plus j3, what I do is I just add the real parts, 4 plus 1 is 5, add the complex part, j2 plus j3 is j5, the total then is 5 plus j5. So complex number addition is simply keep track of the x and y separately and add them together. Subtraction also works. If I have a number 5 plus j5 and I subtract 1 plus j3, I wind up at 4 plus j2. Or just take the real part, subtract 5 minus 1 is 4. Take the complex part, subtract 5 minus 3 is 2. This is 4 plus j2. You can also multiply complex numbers. This gets a little bit trickier. If I multiply two complex numbers, I have all the cross terms. If I group the real parts together, that's 2 times 4 plus j squared. Remember, j is the square root of minus 1, so j squared is minus 1. 2 times 4 is 8, minus 15. The complex part will be the cross terms. 2 times j5, 3 times j4. Put it all together, you get a complex number. So you can multiply complex numbers. In polar form, it's actually easier. In polar form, the amplitudes multiply and the angles add. If you have a number that is complex numbers, you really don't care. You just want it to work. To divide complex numbers, you need a thing called the complex conjugate. The complex conjugate is a complex number where you keep the real part unchanged. You change the sign of the complex part. A property of complex conjugates is the number times its complex conjugate is the real part squared plus complex part squared. The middle terms cancel. With a complex conjugate, I can now divide complex numbers. In polar form, it's fairly easy. It's just the A over B for the amplitude and the angle subtract. In rectangular form, you can also do it. Take the numerator denominator, multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator, do some algebra, and you wind up with a complex number. One thing I highly recommend, do get a calculator that handles complex numbers. HP42s are extremely valuable, extremely useful. I found they're worth about 10 points in midterms. Typically, midterms are races. You need to get to the end or get to the end of the test before time runs out, out in the class. Having a calculator that does complex numbers without fighting you is worth a, quite a bit. HP42s breeze through complex numbers. On the following videos, I'll be demonstrating an HP calculator. Um, you don't have to get one, but it is very useful. You'll appreciate it if you do buy an HP.